so smart. I'm going to share them with you because they rhyme. I'll tell you this, I've been telling a lot of people this lately, but I didn't come down here to change anybody's mind either. I come down here like I always come down here to ease my own. I got started thinking about this song when I, about 1986 during those years that I should have been going to college. I wasn't. But I lived in a town where there was one. So it was almost the same thing. And me and my brother found out that if you wanted to go to a rugby party, you could go to a rugby party. You didn't have to know a handshake, or have an older brother, or anything. You could just go. So we went to all of their parties. And I don't know if their entry policy made it so that not a lot of girls came, but not a lot of girls came. Which is why me and my brother tried to sneak into the fraternity party. And we soon found out ways to get beat up in the world if you don't know the handshake. Somebody will make eye contact 
what you are at least try to and you can feel it out of the corner of your eye and you try to avoid it but that happens and eventually you're looking around the room and bam you make eye contact with that guy and it lasts one eighth of a second and he says what are you looking at you can either say nothing or you both answers are wrong I know this from trial and error. I got this song and I want to sing it for anybody that's going to have a party after the show tonight that any one of us can go to if we want to go to. It's called The Tale of Two Fraternity Brothers. I do it in character. Thompson out in front of the frat and that hippie ran home crying to his parents I can't believe you talked us out of that how sweet was that God we were drunk drove around all night after with that keg in the trunk and when the cop pulled us over you talked us out of that too now you've got a way with it now you've got a way was fun. Besides, it was the 70s. We were a couple of rich kids. And aside from that one hippie, we never really hurt anyone. <laughs> well, there's that other thing that I won't say. As God is my witness, I'm taking that to my grave. Because that was an accident. And you did what you had to do. Stickers on their pickup truck to keep the pickup parked outside. 
one sticker says, what would Jesus do? The other bumper sticker says, power of pride. I was thumbing through the stations on my own television when I came across this guy on the religious station singing somebody's come and he sounded wider than me somehow. <laughs> It took me back in time through dwindling joy to when I was such a guilt-ridden Catholic boy. I'm evangelical agnostic now. I don't know what I'm doing here. And you don't know what I'm doing here either, man. Now Christians don't walk out on me just yet. You know whose name I'll be yelling as I'm clutching my chest? The one my dad told me to and his told him to. And I probably pray as much or more than you do. Believe shit every word I sing. Believing and knowing though, those are two different things. And if we're trying to change the way a stranger's life has to go, I believe this is where I would like to stick to what I know, which is nothing, you know. Nothing for sure, so just chill till the next episode. Now back to the lecture at hand. It seems like my neighbor wants to kill what he can't understand. I say, we can't just kill what we don't understand. But I turn on my TV and I see that, oh yeah, we can, we can. And we have since the dawn of man for countless gods whose only real seeming plan is to see to it that clinging to life is our fate. And you got to admit, man, life is pretty great, but... It's killing us. I'll be here all week. A rusty nail through a careless shoe You can't help but sit around and wonder sometimes Why there's never anything that the nail can do But think about how unfair it is That the shoe is always going where it's got to, too If you ain't the dumb kid out walking around You kinda gotta do what you're born to do Happy New Year, everybody Happy birthday, country Joe
away from all of this I need a drink
gentlemen came together in a garage. They could hardly even play, but they practiced night and day, and pretty soon they got to where they could really play that song, Louie Louie. So they saved up all the money from their shows, went into one of them studios, and they gave their version of that song, Louie Louie, I tried. Now, I don't know the words to that song, Louie Louie, and I'm pretty sure that the singer for the Kingsman didn't know them either. He didn't know them. He didn't get them right on the record because on the record they sound completely jumbled in his jaw. Says me think of me girl who oh, so constantly had to try to figure out the words to that song, Louie Louie. It's the Louie Louie, but I can tell you right now without batting an eye that the 
next time some latchkey kid goes wrong, it ain't gonna be because of something that some singer said in his song. And I'm not trying to preach to you either. I'm just trying to sing to you too. String a few words together. Hey kids. Let's get it on. Uh, I was sitting in my house and I heard these helicopters, this helicopter. yeah! real, low, uh, real low down over my house, right? And uh, I live in East Nashville, so I don't know, it made me want to go out and look at it, of course, because it felt like it was coming down too low, and it was a police helicopter, right? And so I deduced a few things from this, right, that especially, you know, you know that if you see a police helicopter hanging over your house, somebody just did something pretty drastic and it didn't work out very well. And now it turns fairly dramatic, right? And now there's somebody that's running and they're possibly armed and they're probably panicking and they could be coming over my fucking fence at any minute. which is not necessarily the best part of Nashville if you're thinking about your safety, but if you're thinking about the, the kinds of things I'm thinking about on a regular basis, maybe it is the best part. We don't necessarily wear our clothes all starched and tucked in, we don't have like a big dick shield for a belt buckle. We don't usually use a big huge clever line for the title of the song. And sometimes we might sit at the green for a minute if that's all right. Please, Nashville, if you come over there, come visit us, man. But this is a song that happened one of them nights when the helicopter was hovering over my house. I turned the alarm on and I locked myself in and I made up this song here. Now, uh, the end of it is bullshit. I'm going to admit that before I even play it. I couldn't help myself. Once again, I had a gun around here. I turn on my news and what do I hear? Some kid shot the bank up on Gallatin Road. Ran away from the cops while they're trying to reload. He beat him up to East End Street on my feet. Now it's probably reloaded and running down my street. I better turn my alarm on and lock myself in. Never had a 
chance to give a fuck He wouldn't know good luck from a debutante He gotta find a way to be Steve McNair a Young Bucker, he is tough luck Looking for a prison to hunt And you can fuck it in any kind of job that you want Unless you really wanna work in a fast food restaurant And who wants to do that? Do you wanna do that? I wouldn't trade that for my crooked hat Or my gang or my gun Or my waist full of pages For a job deep frying shit for rich teenagers Tracking blood off his feet And he's looking at me like I'll either help him or die Until he sees in my eyes that I'm on his side I hand him my keys, I say you better move fast There's a J in the ashtray and plenty of gas He doubles me his cash, he says I'll be back for this I say, yeah, well don't be surprised if there's a little bit of a missing Let's go Oh, 
Stay on the couch. And I was kind of on the team too. At the beginning 
in the summer, right? And then these guys would get us stoned on marijuana, and I went to practice one day, and I uh, messed up a play. And the coach said, uh, are you stoned or something? And I said, <laughs> team too. I was on the team longer than I was in college though. So now I'm out of school and I'm off the team and I don't have any money and I'm just hanging around. I'm making up this poem, super right? But I'm still living with these three guys, and they have lives, and they're going to college and practice and everything, and I'm just the guy that hangs around their house, and they're trying to figure out how to get to go away. And they went to go to this, well, you, some of you have done that, you know? Everybody's on the sofa circuit a little bit. But I remember this is how I decided I ended up wanting to be a musician. I knew I was going to be one of these Hawaiian guys that met, gave me a harmonica. And uh, I was sitting in the park playing it because I wasn't at the football game. And I met these three guys at the park and I uh, brought them back to my apartment. <laughs> it wasn't my apartment, really. And, and then two of them ended up getting in a fight with each other. And they pretty much tore up the apartment. And so when my roommates got home, they decided that I wasn't supposed to stay there no more. They said, you should go, they should for sure go, and you go too, and go with them, and don't come back here. We ruined our apartment. So I didn't know where else to go, so I went up under the roof of the apartment building, and I had my harmonica, and I was playing it. And I noticed something was happening downstairs, because all this police started to show up. Then it occurred to me that what was happening was up was me on the roof.
they said, hey, old time, we're going to have to ask you to get out of the car.
decided I wanted to play at this place called Lickenbach, Texas. So I sent them my demo tape, and they never called me back. And then one night we were sitting around watching whatever Trog wanted to watch on the television, and the phone rang. They said, hey, this is Large Marge from Lickenbach, and we've had a cancellation for the weekend, and we wanted to know if you could play. Well, shit, of course I wanted to play. So I checked with Trog, and he said it was all right if we all went down there. We went down say we got lost and pulled off the Devil's Backbone Highway into this tavern that was uniquely named the Devil's Backbone Tavern and I was elected to be the one to go in and get direction. I went in and everybody looked pretty tough to me. It seemed like there was about 17 teeth in the whole building. And I've never really been a fighter in my life so I noticed that there was this older woman say in her 80s behind the bar and I thought well I could probably take her. So I went over and I said, ma'am, we're trying to find Lukenbach, Texas, and we are indeed lost. Can you help me get there? And she turned around and she said, fuck Lukenbach. So we did. And at the end of the night, I asked her how much we owed her for the beers, but we've been playing our guitars, so she said, you didn't know me shit, boy. I started going there every Saturday after that. Not much longer I found myself living on the floor of the girls' dorm at Rhodes College in Memphis, Tennessee. And I was thinking back on my days at the Devil's Backbone Tavern, and I came up with this song for Large Marge and Trog and Jerry Jeff and Willie and Waylon and the boys. Virgin tended bar and shack out in here. Never made it no money, but paid a pound her debt. She must have been 80 years old when her heart was born and her hair was cold. She gave away more than she ever sold. She was smiling all the time. They used to sing off in the corner. Shit, I got something that you need to hear. But life isn't easy getting through. Everybody's gonna make things tough on you. I tell you right now, if you dig what you do, they'll never get you down. But life's too short to worry. Life's too long to wait. Too short not to love everybody. Life's too long to wait. You need a lot of men to hang on. It's a hang of all time. Trying to save a nickel, maybe make it down.
and sisters, there's a truck. In fact, on the liner notes of the live record we made, I put in there, I hadn't heard from him in like nine years, right? So I put in the liner notes of the record, P.S. Trog, where are you? And I was on tour for a few months, I come home. I had a message on my machine. It said, Todd, this is Trog. I'm right here, man.
music plays But it don't help But through the ages You know where I am Every day I wonder what you see
Worst case scenario, you're down to look skinny. I'm on your side. Oh, you slid out of a limousine, flashing your pussy. <laughs> Sink on TV. I'm on your side. Hell, maybe all you did is try to adopt some poor kid. I'm on your side. And I'm out here with the camera. I'm hiding in your bush. Yeah. I'm on your side. I'm on your side. Honey, baby. Worst case scenario. Tell me who I'm talking to. I said, here's to anyone that's ever figured out how to do what they would do with the day left now. I said, here's to anyone that's ever figured out how to do what they would do with the day left now. I said, here's to anyone that's ever figured out how to do what they would do with the day left now. I said, here's to anyone that's ever figured out how to do what they would do with the day left now. I said, I Thank you. 
Most of the time I spend behind